What's going on guys? Welcome to the very first episode of the Avenge channel. Um, I want to use this video as a formal introduction. I've never really been on YouTube before. I've never even been in front of a camera for any length of time to be quite honest with you. Um, just to use it as a formal introduction, my name is Mitch Fowler. I'm actually coming at you from a little province on the east east coast of Canada called Newfoundland. If you don't know where this is, you don't have to feel bad about that. Um, we're a little island. We're just floating around out here and we got about 500,000 people, a little bit more. Um, I just wanted to kind of introduce myself to you guys and kind of get the editing bugs out of the way. Um, amongst the other things on this channel that you're definitely going to see, um, I have a pretty cool CTSV V2 six speed manual car that uh, that's always going to be a project. We're always going to the next level with that. Right now it's on meth, cam, pulleys, etc. etc. Um, on top of that, we have an E46 M3 that you're going to see on the channel that was pretty well neglected when I got it, and that's one of those cars that's Always a project. We're always be doing something with that car. Um, as you can see around me, I have myself set up with a little bit of a fab shop. Um, right here to my right, we actually have a CNC table. Um, to the left, we have a six foot shears capable of cutting off quarter inch thick plate. Um, you can see right here is a sheet metal brake. And eventually, we will be upgrading that to hydraulics. That's what these cylinders here are to the left of me. Um, Great thing, works great. We got that shipped up from Swag Off-Road. I built a quick frame around it. Um, but it's just time to update that to hydraulics. So you definitely will see that in the future. Um, amongst other things, we definitely have a power recording set up here, which I'm very, very close to getting up and running. You will definitely see that in our coming videos as well. Um, another thing, myself and my girlfriend, we were into mountain biking. So maybe I'll get to show you guys some mountain bike trails in Newfoundland that you guys might be pretty interested to, maybe not. Um, but on top of all that, I'm actually into guitars. One thing that us Newfoundlanders, I guess, we're, we're really musical people. I kind of went a bit heavier with not so much the Charlie Pride scene, but I probably went closer to, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, grew up in that type of era. So the one thing that we're going to be kind of touching on today is this build that I started quite a while ago, but I never got the chance to finish. So being that we have a CNC table at our disposal, I actually went ahead and made a Dean um, Razorback guitar and as you can see right here in the center I've actually incorporated um, Eddie Van Halen's kind of signature stripes and this is all aluminum build so the top piece is essentially 3 16th aluminum that uh, it's kind of like an over exaggerated pick guard more than anything I will be mounting uh, kind of my volume switch on that um, the bottom is actually full solid um, half inch aluminum plate that I actually cut out and I actually kind of went a little bit too slow on my feed rates but uh, I think we can buff it out and I think we're definitely going to be able to save it um, I plan on powder coating the back and I also went with a reverse headstock instead of the uh, 6 over 6 under tuning keys was never really a fan of that but uh, the reverse headstock is something I really really like in metal guitars and definitely went with that so today I think we're going to focus on trying to kind of mock this up um, you will see that I kind of cheaped out on some things, but the one thing I didn't cheap out on was actually um, getting a set of Dawn Buckers, and that's what this guitar will definitely be running. So calm down guys, this is just the table. I know it's camouflage, but I swear to God there's a table under here. I know it looks like there's stuff floating around, and don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. But, like we were just talking previously, um, you can see I kind of cheaped out on some of this stuff. This is just an Amazon Floyd Rose. Um, I didn't want to go spend too, too much and just, you know, an actual signature Floyd Rose as they're quite expensive. Um, the one thing I will say about all this is that I've never built a guitar, not even a wooden guitar. So this is kind of just trial and error. Um, at the end of the day, if it's hung on the wall next to the other guitars, it's still going to look great. So once again, kind of cheat out on that. And I believe that's kind of a music lily type setup, all off Amazon. Um, the one thing though, we had to go with was the Seymour Duncan Dime Buckers. Did spend quite a bit of money on those and get them shipped into Newfoundland. But uh, you couldn't build a guitar of this stature without getting the Dime Buckers. And worst comes to worst, if I had to swap them into another guitar, if this doesn't work out for me, not a big deal. You can definitely always utilize that. And you know, we have typical hardware for your neck bolt on. This is another piece. This is obviously the, the bar. Um, and once again, all the wiring essentially still got from uh, Amazon. Um, so this is actually the reverse headstock that I got. Once again, this is off Amazon, but it was quite a bit of money. I believe it was a couple hundred dollars to, uh, to purchase this. 
we got some cheap tuners that one of my buddies actually donated to the build. Um, I'm sure he'll get back to me somehow. But uh, they're locking tuners, which obviously you don't really need if you're wanting to solid uh, the bridge, locking bridge. But um, like I say, they were free, so that's what we went with. They will, like I say, we can, we can swap all this out when, if and when it actually works, I guess you could say. So what we're going to focus on today, guys, for sure, is that uh, I'm going to try to get this Floyd Rose installed, pickups installed, and the neck actually on the main part of the body. Um, the way these Floyd Rose, well, Floyd Rose knockoffs, um, the way they are installed, they kind of use these pins you drill a hole in if your guitar is wooden or if it's uh, some type of composite body, I guess. You kind of drill the hole and you can use adhesive to hold these in. With this, where it's aluminum, I think I'm going to just try to shove it in and see if it'll actually stick. If not, worst comes to worst, I could always run a bead of TIG weld around there. Um, I think that's going to be plan C. I think I'll go in the adhesive if I have to before I go that route. Um, the pickups, I'm going to install them, but I do have a humbucker pickup out of like an old Yamaha guitar that I'm actually going to utilize for mock up because I don't really want to do any damage to those dime buckers. Um, the pots, pots are going to be a bit of an issue because the way I have this set up is that this top piece is kind of like an over exaggerated pick guard. It's just, it's a monstrosity. But the way I have it mounted is that I have four different mounting points that's bolted in through the back, this main piece here. And what that does is actually, it's a, I believe it's a half inch shim I actually cut out on the table. And that kind of holds it off the main part, as you can see here, hopefully in this video. And uh, that kind of took away one of my mounting points when I laid out all the stripes. I kind of tried to lay it strategically so I would have enough room for my pots, but uh, kind of messed up there. So maybe I can get them right here, really tight together. Not sure how it's going to look, but I do want to run. I do want to run, run my switch up here for sure. Um, so yeah, that's where we're going to get started. I have to do a bunch of layout. I'm going to run up and get that humbucker and uh, a bunch of holes to drill, and we'll go from there. So guys, I ran up to the house and uh, I got this pickup. This is out of a Yamaha RGX model series. I think it's a 110, I'm not really sure. It was quite a while ago. And um, I kind of had an extra screw laying around that I kind of made sacrificial and I brought it to the bench grinder and I put a point on the end of it. And what that allowed me to do was kind of set it in this pocket here and uh, kind of center it up and put it exactly where it had to be. Kind of took a few measurements there. And I just gave it a little light tap at the, uh, on the head of that screw. And what that allowed me to do then, it kind of has a center point now that I can drill with the drill press. And uh, yeah, that's how I kind of done that. I actually went ahead, drilled all the holes, um, the mounted holes for the Floyd Rose, and all that drilled. Um, the pickups are in very temporarily. I just kind of have them laid in place just to kind of get a feel to see how it fit against the, uh, the pick guard, I want to call it. Um, I actually went ahead as well and mounted the neck. Um, came out really great. The one thing about the neck that we kind of had to be very careful of is that this is a half inch material, and essentially, on any other guitar, wooden guitar, wooden body, that's probably close to like inch, inch and a quarter of material there where your neck bolts on. So the extra long screws, well, not really extra long, they were extra long for this particular project. Um, I had to cut them off. If not, that would have been very horrible to come through your nice fretboard. So glad I caught that before I made the mistake. Um, the other other thing does is that uh, I do have a little bit of clearance issue right here that I think Hopefully you can get you in that shot there. Um, I think I'm just going to take the dog around and come out. But I think it came out really great. Um, I think I should have very, very little issues. Um, right here, where my Floyd Rose kind of goes into those pins. I actually forgot in my program when I cut this out on the table to add the relief for that little bit extra mounting bracket for your dog bar, so your whammy bar. Um, that would be pretty easy. I'll just put it on the plasma table and, or the plasma machine itself. and free-handed or something like that and clean up with the uh, the dog armor but other than that I think it's going to be pretty cool um, probably just put that palm lapse again here real quick change up this knot because I did actually find a black knot
So there you have it guys, we just swapped out that locking nut. Um, definitely looks way better than the chrome for sure. But uh, that fretboard is really nice for an Amazon neck, I must say. So that's it guys, guitar is mocked up, um, very loosely mocked up. There's definitely quite a few other things, but essentially I can almost uh, take this apart again now and get that shipped out to powder coating. But there is quite a bit of buffing and stuff I have to do to get that prepped for powder coating. But yeah, let me know in the comment section what you think of it, what I should do. Even give me your opinion on what color I should do the back. I'm thinking something like um, really dark royal blue and leave this brushed aluminum front onto it with that uh, fretboard. I think that'll look really, really sharp on that. But uh, when we actually do the final, final assembly, for sure I'll be doing another video on that and letting you guys know how it sounds. And uh, stick around, subscribe to the channel. That'd be excellent. It'd be a huge boost to me. Um, let me know what I'm doing wrong with the uh, video editing. And uh, total learning experience, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.